Okay, welcome to Introduction to Computer Science A. That is AP Computer Science A. Let's let's qualify that or clarify that one. AP Computer Science A. Uh, this is Unit 2A. I'm dividing this unit into two different parts because there's about the first half is about objects in general. The second half is about objects, but string objects. So we'll make those in two different videos. Uh, my name is Christian Thompson, and you can find me on Twitter at at Tokyo Ed Tech. Um, so let's get started. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give my class a name. Now, if you haven't seen uh, Unit 1, uh, I would go back and watch that first. So I'm going to call this class Unit 2, and I'm going to put an A there because this is A. And as I mentioned before, I'm going to use this format for my braces, and I'm going to make my public static void main and string oops string args and this is just to get myself started so I have something to do um, now I'm going to save this and you'll notice it thankfully already does unit 2a Java remember these have to be the same and I am using UTF-8 I'm going to go onto my computer somewhere I'm going to find my desktop and go to my intro videos and I'm going to call this unit 2a and save it there Okay. Now, I've also got, as I prepared for this particular lesson, uh, a class called dog.java. And so let me explain what we're looking at. So in unit 2.1, um, basically we're looking at classes, class variables, and class constructors. Okay, and I'll put these, eventually I'll get these files into the description down below. So a class uh, and, and an instance of a class. This is what we need to look at. Java is an object-oriented language, so everything is a class. What, what is a class? Well, the definition is that a class is a formal implementation or blueprint of the attributes and behaviors of an object. Very, very helpful. Uh, so what's an object? An object is a specific instance of a class with defined attributes. So what we're going to be using, looking at today or using as an example is a class called dog. So what we're doing is we're defining what a dog is, okay, and what our dog's attributes are and what a dog can do. And so that's where we're at right now. So I've already written this, and again, I, I said I will share this eventually. Um, so what I've got is I've got a private, and I'll talk about that in a minute, string, and it's called name because our dog is going to have a name. But since we don't know what the dog's name is at the beginning, we're just going to put blank quotation marks. And then we're also going to have a private int for the dog's age. And we're going to say zero because we don't know the dog's age at this point. Okay, so in previous examples, you've seen public. So public static void main, for example. Um, so in this case, you'll see private. So what private means is anyone outside the class cannot directly access this variable. Okay, so what that means is here where I'm in class dog, down here, I can access these variables, name and age. However, over here in unit 2a Java, I can't access that because this is a completely separate class. Hopefully that'll make a little bit more sense as we go on. Okay. Now, this class definition isn't actually gonna be really running in the sense that this is. Okay, so our program, as you saw in the previous video, starts at main. Okay, and starts running here. Um, but what we can do is we can use other classes and their attributes and their methods. Okay, so what that's gonna look like, okay, so I've got a dog, and so what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be making, quote unquote, some dogs. So you'll see here, I've got dog. Notice the dog is the class and dog is the name of this method. There's nothing in the parentheses. And this is called the class constructor. So when I create a new dog, this method is called. And what that method's gonna do is it's going to say, I am a newborn puppy. And it will pre create a name and an age, which will be blank and zero for that particular puppy, or for that dog. Now, I've also got an, another method, constructor, actually in this case, constructor method, called dog. And in it, it's got string and my name. Okay, so if we, what we can do is if we want to, when we create the dog, we can give it a name. Okay, so now we're not going to worry so much about how that works. 
All we're going to look at for this particular unit is looking at the signature, which is the name and then the types of uh, parameters that are being sent. And in this case, no parameters. In this case, a string. And then we'll look at some uh, other methods and how to call them. So in this unit, we're learning how to use objects. We're not really learning how to make objects. So I'll be skipping over some information. Uh, in a later unit, we'll talk about how to write our own objects. And this is the order that the College Board has suggested, so we'll, we'll try it their way. So I want to go back to my unit 2A. And what I want to do in here is I want to actually construct an object. So 2.2, .2, which is constructors, parameters, and overloading. And I kind of hinted at this a little bit earlier. So what I can do is I can make a new dog. Now notice, this dog is the same as this file name, so which is the same as the class. So I'm making, I'm saying that dog lucky, that was my dog's name, lucky equals a new dog. And I'm going to put lucky in there. So I'm going to run this and see what happens. Okay. So you see on the screen, I am a newborn puppy. My name is Lucky. So what we've done is we've created a new dog called Lucky. He is new. And we said his name is Lucky. So if I go back to my dog class, okay. now notice here there's nothing in the parentheses. So it did not call this constructor. Rather, it called this constructor because the signatures match. So string my name, and then down here, string. So I, this is a string, so it found this constructor. So you'll see, I am a newborn puppy. It made its name equal to my name, which is what we sent to it. And it says my name is Lucky in this case. Okay. So now I could make another dog. I could say, uh, I'll say my mom's dog, say dog Bella equals new dog Bella and in that case what we'll end up having is two different dogs okay. so what we've done here is we've constructed two new dogs one has the name Lucky one has the name Bella okay so we've sent as a parameter to the constructor a string so we look there's no string here but there's a string here and it call it prints this out, sets that instance's name to whatever we sent to it, which is my name. So lucky, lucky. So name equals lucky, and then it prints out my name is name, or in this case, or in the case of Bella, it prints out Bella. So once we've done that, we've got two different instances of dog. So the dog. Yeah, I know this is confusing, but it'll, it'll come to you as we practice. So each of these dogs is different. Makes sense. Um, they have different names. And right now, both of them, their ages are set to zero. So we'll get to that in a little bit. So the next thing that we want to do is part 2.3 is something called calling a void method. Okay. A void method is a method that does not return a value. Okay. So methods can either you, know, you can send a value to a method or you can not send a value to a method. You can return a value from a method or not return a value from a method. So a method that does not return a value is called void. Void means empty or nothingness. Okay, so we're going to be returning nothing. So I've created a void method for us to use. And I'm going to use lucky.bark. That's called bark. And I'm going to do bella.bark. No further parentheses. Okay. So let me run that and we'll see what happens and I'll explain it. Okay, so you see, Lucky barks, bark. Bella barks, bark. So if I go over to my dog class, I go down a little bit. Okay, I've got a void method there. It says public void bark. It is void because we're not returning a value. Okay, if you're not sure what that means, we'll get to that another time. Um, so system.out.println, print line, name barks. So how do we know which name it is? So you see, Lucky, what's Lucky's name? Lucky, which is what we sent over here. Okay. What's Bella's name? It's Bella. Okay. 
So based on the object that we're actually calling the method on, so it's object name dot method. It calls that method for us here and it prints out that particular instance's name. So Lucky's name and Bella's name. Okay, so that is a void method. So it is void because it doesn't return anything. Okay. And that's yeah, you know, it just does something. It doesn't return a value to our program. Okay. So part 2.4. Again, I know some of this won't make sense yet, but it'll make a little more sense, I think, later. We're calling a void method with parameters. Okay. So I have another method called lucky.set name. And let's say Lucky has a last name, Lucky Luciano. That was actually my dog's name. Okay. So void means we're not returning any value. But in this case, you can see how we are actually sending a value. In this case, it's called a parameter. So now if I go over to set name, you'll see it's void because I'm not returning anything. I'm setting the name. And you'll see this a lot in Java, set and some type of variable, and then get, we'll get to that in a little bit. So I'm sending a string, and it's called my name. And so what I do is I'm setting the name, so Lucky's name, I'm changing it from whatever it was to whatever parameter I sent. So over here, I'm sending Lucky Luciano. So my name is Lucky Luciano. So then the name of Lucky then becomes Lucky Luciano. So let me run that and try it again. Oops, I set the name, but I didn't print it out. So system.out.println. Now here's something interesting. So my name is, okay, now let's see what happens here. Okay, so we have an error says name has private access in dog. Okay, So this is where the public and private thing comes in. Because over here, we said that the name is private. Okay, What that means is over here, in a different class, we can't directly access it. Okay, Normally we could do lucky.name or object.attribute is the general terminology. But here we can't do that because we said it was private. Well, for whatever reason on the AP test, they are looking for the use of private. So when you are writing your tests, make sure that you use private, okay? Because you will uh, lose a point for that, uh, as I am told. Um, so what we need to do is we're going to be calling a non-void method, okay? So. Okay, so calling a non-void method is a little bit different. Oops, don't want to do that. So if I look over here, my next method on my list, oops, okay, is get name. Okay, so non-void. So he, this is a void method, so you see void here. This is a non-void method, so I'm going to be returning a string. Okay, so this is a very simple thing. So in this case, I've got get name, and I'm returning name. Now, up here, name is a string, so they have to match. Okay, so if I come back down, I'm going to re be returning a name, and that is a string, so everything has to match up. So that's how I'm going to be able to get the name out of my object. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say system.out.println my name is quote plus lucky.getName. Now it's a method, so I need the parentheses. Okay. 
So the reason I can do get name is because over here it is public. Public means from a different class I can access it. The reason I couldn't do the other one, which is lucky dot name, it's because it was private. Okay. Now, I could have made this public. It is possible. It's, it's not impossible. Um, I could have actually made this private. Okay. There, there's no rules on what you have to do. As I mentioned earlier with the AP test, they like to see private when you write your classes. Um, so then you'll use set and get to change the values. Um, there are other, some other advantages to doing it that way, but for now, let's just you know keep it at that. So I'm going to try that and run it. And let's see what happens here. Okay, so you can see here, Lucky Barks. My name is Lucky Luciano. So then now if I do lucky dot, oops, lucky dot bark, let's see what happens. Okay, so because I changed the name from Lucky to Lucky Luciano, we see Luc Lucky Luciano Barks. Okay, so that's, that is how that works. Um, and then there's one last thing I just wanted to point out real quick, uh, the null keyword. Okay, so, and this is something that uh, beginners especially have trouble with. Um, so for example, null just basically means that it doesn't exist at all. So if I say like this, so if I say uh, lucky.set name, okay, like that, I say lucky, now you wouldn't do this, it doesn't make any sense, but just to demonstrate the principle, so if I run that, okay, so I changed the name and now there's nothing there, okay? That is not null, okay? There is still a value there, it's empty, but there is still a value, okay? What null means, and what when you see null, uh, is when you, you just go something like this, say lucky equals null. And what that does is it completely deletes that object from the computer's memory. It is no longer an active object. Okay, the garbage collector, which you don't need to worry about, will come along and free up that memory space for you. Okay, because it is now null. So if I do this, lucky.bark, we're gonna see some type of error. So you say exception. Okay, in Java, when you see exception, that means an error. Uh, in thread main Java, so we were inside of the main method. It was a Java language null pointer exception. Okay, so I try to call the bark method on Lucky, which is no longer a dog. Lucky is null. It has no meaning. It has no value. There's nothing associated with it. Okay, so this is called a null pointer exception. So that's something that you will see from time to time. When you're done using an object, you can set it to null, and what that will do is it will free up the memory uh, so you don't run out of memory on your computer. Again, for the programs you'll be writing, probably won't matter, but it's just something to be aware of. Okay, so just a real quick uh, wrap up here. Uh, unit 2A, we use constructors to make a new instance of an object. The class, dog, in this case, defines what this object, like what attributes it has and what methods and what it can do. So this class defines the, the variables, the instance variables, it def or the, and the constructor. So depending on whether or not you send the right types of parameters and the right number of parameters, it will call different constructors or methods. And this is called overloading. Same name, but it has a different signature. Okay, so based on the signature, the system will choose the right constructor or method in this case. Um, there are void methods which do not return a value. So you have to put void in here. Um, there are methods that do not receive a parameter. There are methods that do receive parameters. And we could end up, we could have done also int uh, my age. And then we could have done something like uh, age equals you know, my age. So we could have done it like that. We could have made a new method uh, that has all of that. It's really up to the programmer and the design and the requirements of that problem. And then there's also 
calling non-void methods, and these return a value. So you have the return keyword, and you have to tell it what type of value it's going to be returning. So this value type has to match the type of that, or that variable. Okay. And then over here is where we actually did all those things. We called the method. So here we define the methods and the attributes, public and private access. And over here, we actually call them and actually use them. Okay, so you see there's a separation of what the class is and the actual instances that we're working with. Okay. So I'm going to stop there for this uh, part, Unit 2A, or, and then Unit 2B, we'll see this in a bit, maybe in a bit more practical sense uh, with the, the uh, string class. Okay, so stay tuned.